Good evening. It is September 1st, 2015, and you're watching Google Rocks Hawaii, episode number 80. And uh, we're ex very excited tonight because we are going to be learning about Boxer from a variety of educators from all over the continent and the Pacific. And I think it's our most uh, geographically diverse group, thanks to Karen Corbell of the Big Island, in Mountain View, um, Big Island of Hawaii, for gathering everyone together to let us know, tell, tell us all about how a boxer can be used for professional development. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a back seat. I'll be in the back looking at the Q&A and um, having any kind of, um, hopefully no technical difficulties, but making sure that's all okay. We have uh, show notes going like we usually do, which will have all of the links that we mention, um, either during uh, already there or will be up there shortly. And that link is bit.ly, bit.ly slash grh, for Google Rocks Hawaii, 80 notes. So that is on my screen under my name. So uh, we'll refer back to that again. So I am going to hand the floor, give the floor over to Karen. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say a very, very big thank you to Claire, Jennifer, and Derek. Oh, and is it Angela? Amanda. Amanda? Amanda, I'm sorry, forgive me. I just met Amanda tonight. Um, so I would like to say thank you because Heather and Jennifer especially, it is 1 o'clock in the morning for them. So we really appreciate them taking the time out of their very busy weekday schedules to be here with us. Um, we just want to kind of highlight what Boxer does for us. Many people don't even know what it is. Um, but instead of me giving a whole spiel, I would like to just really turn the floor right away over to each of us to introduce ourselves. Give us a little bit of your background and um, go ahead and highlight, you know, what you use Boxer for currently and if you have any plans to maybe use it in the future. And then when it comes down to myself and Rochelle and the people that are in the Hawaii time zone, we'll maybe do a little kind of backwards mapping sort of and fill in some gaps on, um, on more specific things about Boxer itself, the, the device itself. Um, or the app itself. Okay, so I guess, um, Heather, why don't you get started? Okay. Um, do you, Karen, wanna, want me to actually do my slides part or just introduce myself right now? Um, I think why don't we just go ahead and do your introduction and your slide. It kinda, I think that would be fine. Okay. All right. Uh, my name is Heather Gauk and I am Karen's sister. I teach in Michigan on the west side. I have been teaching special education for 20, this is my 22nd year. I am a resource teacher, so I teach K through 4 this year I will be teaching. And uh, so I am going to share my screen. And I just have four slides just to sort of give a background of uh, how I became connected with the Voxer and real quickly what I use Voxer for. And Heather, if you are the first person going, why don't you just very quickly, for people that maybe have absolutely no idea what we're talking about, tell them what it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a good idea. Um, what Voxer is, it is a free app that you can download on either your iPhone or your Droid. And instead of texting and just using, like Twitter has 140 characters, um, Voxer is an audio app. So I think I mentioned it's free and so you are able to use or to leave and share audio messages uh, with other educators or other people. Perfect. And we will talk obviously throughout this whole thing more specifics and, and um, more about what the app does. Okay, so let's see. Looks like you're sharing your screen. I okay. Let so can you see? Yes. Uh, see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, this is 
my contact information over here. So you can find me on Twitter at Heather Gauck. And there's some websites. And real quickly, hopefully this is going to work. There we go. I became, I started becoming a connected educator, actually not through Voxer. These were some of the quick, um, these were some of the other avenues. I started with Google Plus Communities because I was piloting iPads and so in order to get my answers that I, I or my questions answered that I had about iPads, uh, I would use my, I joined an iPad community. And so I realized, wow, I could put my question there and get an answer within usually about a half hour. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really my first, I would mm -hmm. say, time um, realizing how incredible it was to be connected to other educators and to be able to get your answer uh, within, you know, the same day. I also used um, edweb.net, Simple K12. Those were some real, those were free uh, webinars that I could use, and those were also community type. Um, and so from there, it got me, I through some of those webinars, I, be, I started using Twitter. And so then through Twitter, I realized that I could become even more connected with educators using chats. And so um, it really got me sort of on the, on the road of being connected to other educators. Then came along, uh, I believe it was two summers ago, I joined, I heard of a group not at ISTE. ISTE is a huge computer conference for educators and I was unable to go. So I became part of that group and that was where I heard about Voxer. So I started using Voxer listening to the audio conversations that they were having and sort of got it but then sort of took a step back from it and that was right about the time that Karen I think started using or I had mentioned it to Karen and there was, she had heard about it and so it was that summer that we connected on Voxer, Karen and I. And so in Voxer you can have private um, or you can join groups and so this was just an, a continuation of being connected and so I um, joined the sat chat which they have a Twitter chat on Saturday mornings and they continued the conversation throughout the week on the sat chat boxer group and so you could listen I could listen to the conversations or the audio messages people were using and or were leaving and then I could respond or I could just sort of listen to it and it was at my time so when I was able to listen that it was it just worked really well for me and it was through this experience that I realized that I wanted to start a Mished because we have a very big connected group that was using Twitter in Michigan and it was hashtag Mished and so there was already sort of a community there and it was slow um, but I really just started tweeting out to all those educators you need to join the Mished Voxer group because you can actually talk to each other and with Voxer you can either talk to it you could hear them if you're in the app you can hear them at the same time or if you're not in the app you can just hear the conversation when it works for you and so um, it you can like I said you can either do iPhone or Droid and then you are given a handle. Mine is hgout428. And so that's what I share with people. Uh, let's see, my next slide. Well, it sounds like it definitely enhanced your ability to, to figure things out and learn at your own pace and during your own time. Yes, that is true because when I, um, I think I, after I did the Mished and the EduMatch, I also because I'm a special education teacher, I used or I created the specialized instruction group and it really 
opened, I guess it sort of, it was a way for me to connect with special education teachers across the nation. So it wasn't just at my school or it wasn't in my just at my district. I was able to connect with people across the nation when I needed them. Uh, so I usually use, I think um, on this slide it says that I use it for questions, I use it for feedback, I uh, support positivity. Most of the people on Voxer, if you're using Voxer and you're an educator, um, most people are extremely positive and just supportive. Uh, it does get rid of the limits of 140 characters. The nice thing you can do, you can do text. You can also take pictures. You can, so I, so we share pictures, we share links, um, and it's the greatest thing is that it's really on my time schedule. So it's usually my podcast on my way to and home from work. Great. And Great. the way that I've been connected, I just will really quickly point out some of these um, this is a picture of myself and Eric Scheninger. Eric Scheninger is a principal, uh, or he was a principal in on the East Coast, and he's he wrote a book, Digital Leadership, and it was through the Sat Chat, I believe, um, Voxer group that I heard that they were going to do a another group. They were going to form a group and do a book study on digital leadership. And Eric Scheninger actually joined that book study. So here we were, educators all over, doing a book study, and Eric was in the book study with us. So we could actually ask the author questions. Yeah. And so that was just amazing. And here's some other... Um, people I met uh, in the sat chat since when you use your voice and you can hear um, people talk then you just feel like it's more of a connection and so these people um, this was Brad Gustafson he's an incredible principal uh, I, I Karen do you remember where he's located I'm, I'm not sure, but it is kind of neat because Voxer does allow you to hear in your, the voice, the way people sound. It make, gives a much more personal connection, and Brad is one of these guys that has a very unique uh, intro to his hellos on all the Voxer <laughs> chats. It, He's a very up positive person with high quality things to share, so it's, it's really an amazing opportunity to connect with all these people. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I'll just um, um, end with this. What you just said is on this bottom uh, picture. This is Jennifer Bond. And this picture is taken right after I was doing, I was speaking into a microphone doing um, something at this big meeting or conference where there were about 250 educators. And so Jennifer walked into the room and she it was so crowded she couldn't see me but she could hear me and so she said I knew that was you because I heard your voice and I've been listening to you on Voxer. <laughs> oh that's neat. So that was very neat. So I'll just end with and keep this in mind definitely after everybody talks tonight um, but just to remember that to choose when you are doing Voxer um, or any of this educated stuff just to remember to choose one or two things to implement um, or, you know, download Boxer and take it baby steps. Uh, download Boxer and then spend a lot of time just listening to educators. You don't have to jump right in and start conversing. Um, you can lurk for a while and that's always uh, very nice. Nice. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Heather, for sharing all that. Um, I think we're going to see a reoccurring uh, theme through everybody's uh, ideas and thoughts that they share because, Heather, one of the things that popped out to me is that you said you got very quick answers to your, your questions, even for tech questions, any, any, anything you're trying to work out. That's, that's common. Um, builds community. And then the Twitter, Twitter chat spinoff, that's kind of a neat angle, and that, mm -hmm. that will pop up again. Um, so Jennifer, and, and just keep in mind, guys, the time we're at 7:18 p.m. We are done, Linda. Are we done at about uh, five till eight, so we can wrap up? Oh, Linda must have done a no, really. I'm good. It just took me a while to get to find the microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just, just uh, do it. Check. Yeah, usually we end at eight, so that's fine. Okay. If we Great. go a little over, I think we started a little late, so. 
Okay, wonderful. Well, um, Jennifer, we're so happy that you could join us, and thanks again for getting up at one in the morning. And um, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, that you're a literacy consultant for a very large group of students. So why don't you give us the details? I am indeed. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm a literacy consultant and a lead learner for a tech initiative at my district. And we do have a rather large district. We have 50. 5,000 students um, and the tech initiative that I lead is for approximately 400 to 600 students, uh, teachers rather. So I work with the teachers. Um, like Heather, I am a connected educator and I've been primarily connected through Twitter. And I came upon Voxer quite by accident actually because I've been learning about ed camps. So I'm from Ontario, Canada and we don't have a lot of ed camps and no one I know has heard of Voxer. So um, on Twitter someone said, oh you know uh, Voxer is like an ed camp, like a level two ed camp. And I sort of said, uh -huh. um, uh, can you please explain what that means? I had the uh, Voxer app, but I really hadn't done anything with it because I didn't know what to do with it. Um, and so it wasn't until I, Matt Fratt, said to me, well, there's an ed EduMatch uh, Voxer group. Maybe you'd like to learn by jumping in and, you know, lurking there. And so um, when I got put into this group and I thought, oh, well, I, I'm not going to contribute. I'm just going to listen to everybody. And within, I don't know, like 45 minutes, I was already contributing and I, I was sharing ideas and sharing links. And uh, I think what is most exciting to me is how easy it is to use. Um, mm -hmm. I literally press a button and talk. and uh, and. You know, or I can text if I'm in the middle of something. So um, unlike Twitter, which I think has a bit of a learning curve, though I love it, don't get me wrong, I, I really think that uh, my teachers are going to be excited about this because it's so easy. Um, that's number one. The, um, I have limited data, so I was really worried about uh, how much data is this going to suck up. And in fact, when I first started, I've only been on it for three weeks, when I first started, it was sucking up my data quite a bit, so I just learned to turn the cellular data off. And the way I make it work for me now is I will, when I'm in Wi-Fi, an area of Wi-Fi, I load all my boxes load. And then what I do now is I get excited about going, taking a trip to the grocery store because yeah. I can listen to my boxes on the way there. Um, yeah. And like Heather, there have been, there are people in our boxer group that are from Ghana from Rio de Janeiro, from the Philippines. We had an amazing conversation, I think it lasted three days, about homework. And it was amazing to me um, the different perspectives that people bring. So to me, being able to listen to what people have to say and, and the perspectives that they bring is so incredibly powerful. And it's that added layer because you do feel like you get to know them because they're good morning, you know, and, and all of that. So one of the ways, or a couple of the ways I'd like to use it in my district um, is I am responsible for a group of new teachers and new teachers uh, in Ontario anyway we have a mentor mentee program and unfortunately I mean you know the practical side is they don't always stay as connected as they could be so what I'd like to do is take that mentor mentee relationship and bring it to the next level by having all of the mentors and all the mentees connect. There's nothing worse than a new teacher being in a situation where they don't know what to do about a parent call or you know how do I navigate this particular issue um, to be able to to connect with someone immediately or, or almost immediately on Voxer would be a very very powerful thing. I spoke to my IT consultant he was excited about using Voxer um, for troubleshooting so you know yeah. that immediate feedback. Um, the book study is a great idea and we have a, a group doing a, a book study and in addition so when I'm we were talk talking about so all the grade four teachers like wouldn't it be amazing I've been advocating for this forever you're all teaching grade four don't reinvent the wheel have a boxer group for your grade four teachers so that you can share ideas and and it's very specific to you so those are kind of some of the ways that I will be using it well, that's exciting. I'm glad that you're so excited about it and you've only been using it for three weeks. I'm I really know. very glad, <clears throat> too, that you shared the bit about turning off the cellular data. Mm -hmm. That can be really important. <clears throat> and, um, you know, if anybody else that's been using Foxer for a while thinks of some of those technical tips to throw in, just go for it. Um, 
Yeah, I think, um, Lisa, that connecting people up is such a fun way to um, use Boxer, but it is a little bit difficult to get people to buy in and come aboard. Uh, so by not making it obviously mandatory, but but using it within that professional world of, um, like you were mentioning, the mentor mentees. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to kind of hook people. And but but that said, if you're willing, then it's really great to have somebody who's sort of following up and encouraging or being there for answers or to get their questions answered. Um, about the app itself or just to kind of be held accountable a little bit within something of that nature. Uh, when we're using it for personal PD as a podcast in our cars, we, you know, we're the only ones that make ourselves do it. And usually it's because it is so energizing and fulfilling that it just sort of happens naturally. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage you to definitely check in with your newbies um, if you're going to use it in, within that professional role. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. That makes a lot of sense. And if I could just say, so when I was thinking about this, I thought, um, you know, we would it would be completely voluntary, and I would have them play in the space first and see if this is even for them. Because the greatest success I've had is when people experiment with it and play with it, and, and you know, just see is this going to work? Is this not going to work? But again, having that mentor or that person to help support for sure. Okay, and I, I appreciate you sharing about the homework conversation because that does that is one thing that really excites me as well, and I think everybody in this who's here and uses it is the conversations that enhance mm -hmm. and help your perspective grow as an individual within, you know, the things that you already know and the things that you can learn. <clears throat> um, wonderful. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share right now? And if not, we'll turn it over to, um, I can't remember who is in the, the, are you two in the same time zone, <laughs> Amanda and Derek? I'm in mountain time. Uh, and I'm on the West Coast in California, so I can I have. It's not too terribly late for me still. <laughs> yeah, either or, I, I, I can I can wait too. I'm good. This okay. this is still early night for me. All right. Well, Jennifer, any last last uh, thoughts before we move to Derek? No, but I may just go to bed. Is that wrong? No, I'll stay. I'll stay. <laughs> but if I if I fall asleep and I disappear, no, thanks so much. Sleepy. Go go to sleep if you need to. We won't mind at all. <laughs> Um, hey, Karen, can I jump in real quick? Of course, yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, to Jennifer uh, that one of the things, one of the projects that we're trying to do here in Michigan, or there's a principal here in Michigan who really wants to start a grade four boxer group. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and if you were just throwing that grade four out, you know, um, you were just picking a group, or if you seriously think like your grade four would be a good grade to have a fourth grade boxer group, we'll just have to um, stay connected. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. Well, Lisa, if you do sneak off, or Jennifer, I'm sorry, if you do go off to sleep, have a, have a good evening, and thank you so much for joining our, our chat. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, Derek, Southern Utah. All right. Sorry. Perfect. So my name is Derek Larson. Um, I'm in my eighth year of teaching. Uh, I've been seven years in fourth grade, and this year I've just met, just now moved to fifth grade. Um, I'm a tech-loving person, so I'm one of those guys that when I hear about something tech, I jump right on because I have to have my username. I have the same username almost everywhere I go, and I'm just a nerd like that. So almost anything that has that comes out. I'm right on it the minute I hear about it, even if I don't use it. I'm just, I'm a nerd like that. So, um, you know, my, my timeline for social media started back when I was in college in 2003 and Facebook, you know, that, that, was, that was back when you had to have a, call, a .edu to even get into it. So I was, I was back in those days. And then in 2010, my next big one was Twitter. And I, I mean, MySpace was in there, but I, I'm not really going to count MySpace. That was just messing around, just garbage, you know. Although I did learn how to code, I, I learned some HTML code because of MySpace. You know, you got to pimp your, your profile. But <laughs> Twitter was my next big one, and that was in 2010. You know, three years after the service was only around for three years, but I didn't do much with it for almost a whole year until I realized that teachers are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so then I got real big into Twitter about 2011, 
and just push that, you know. Google did the whole Google Plus thing where they forced you to do Google Plus. So I was in there a little bit here and there. But, you know, Voxer came this just barely this year, like in like mm-hmm. February or March. And what had happened is somebody who was following online mentioned about the weird teacher. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't think of his actual name. No, Doug, Doug Richardson, I believe. And and he had written a book, and I thought, that, guy's really, that, guy, that guy is kind of weird. He's kind of cool, though. I like him. And they said they were having a book chat on it. And I thought, okay, I've done Twitter chats. I like Twitter chats. By that point, I was moderating um, Utah Ed Chat, which happens every Wednesday night um, at 9 p.m. Mountain Time. So if you guys want to come in early, you, you Islanders, come on on. And the rest of you, feel free. We picked a Mountain Time because we're Utah, and we want to focus on the, the Utah teachers. So we kind of said the heck with everybody else. We're going to pick a time that works for us specifically. <laughs> You're still welcome, but it may not be good timing. Sorry. <laughs> so um, I heard about this book chat, and but yet they were talking about something called Voxer, and I'd never heard of Voxer. And somebody said, well, it's, it's kind of like a walkie-talkie. I said, like, like the old Nextel phones? <laughs> and they said, yeah, like the old Nextel phones. So I jumped on there, and that was my very first Voxer chat, and it was, um, it was on his the, He's the Weird Teacher. And it was, it was Weird TBC is what it was called. And it was awesome. It was, it was excellent, and we'd do basically the Twitter chat, but then what was really cool is then the rest of the week until the next chat, yes. we would just talk about stuff that related to the chat, and like like I said earlier, you know, I love Twitter, but you're limited to that 140 characters, mm-hmm. and Voxer is awesome because there's no limit, and if you want to go for 10 minutes, by all means, people aren't going to love you for it, they're going to be like, hey, you've like hit that three minute, you know, you're in, you're in timeout now for a while, buddy. <laughs> I'm in timeout a lot. Let's put it that way. I I'm very verbose. Derek, tell them about the um, speed up options on the bottom. <laughs> oh, so so Voxer has a really cool feature where you can, as you're playing it, you can push. It has a little one X, and if you push it, you can go two X or three X or four X. And I'm like, okay, I'm not an East Coaster, so I can't do the three and four. But the two speed, two times, I can do two time. But that's about it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That saved my bacon since, as I've gotten more into. But initially, I was really against it because I'm like, I want to hear their actual voice. I don't want to have like a Smurf voice or a chipmunk voice. <laughs> Man, you got to do it. So honestly, if you're new to Voxer, hit that, hit that two times or three times, whatever you can handle. Um, you know, and and that's kind of where I started. And in that in that one ch- that one Voxer group, I suddenly met I met Sarah Thomas awesome. from Edgy Match. Yeah. She's and awesome. I'm now realizing that Sarah's like everywhere. Like she and I have become pretty good buddies. And I just joined a chat just today, a new, another one called Admin to Be, and she was like the first person to welcome me. I'm like, Sarah, you were literally everywhere. How do you have time for all this? She I don't said know how she, she had, she's it. in 50. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't doubt if she was in more than 50 at this point. Okay. Girls everywhere. Everything I've been in, I'm like, hey, there's Sarah. Hey, there's Sarah. <laughs> oh, Sarah, well, welcome again. So. <laughs> Um, I think I'm currently at about 10, and I'm, like, struggling. So here's wow. my biggest tip. If you're new to it, you don't have to listen to every word. And I was in one over the summer that was the Not a Disty boxer group. And I'm not kidding you. If you turned your back on that thing for even an hour, you'd have 100 to 200 or more in one hour. And I got to the point where I learned really quickly, that, you know what? If you play catch-up, you may not get anything else done. And um, I deliver flowers over the summer for my parents. And so I stopped listening to radio. I stopped listening to podcasts and listened to only Voxer groups to try to catch myself up on all these things. I thought, you know, this is fun, but now it's becoming almost a chore that you've got to hear every single word. And so that's when I learned about the Mark All is Heard is Listened uh, feature. You know, and, and I think there's nothing wrong with occasionally jumping in on that and saying, hey, guys, sorry, i gotta, I got to claim Voxer bankrupt, bankruptcy because it's just... I've got an overload, you know, and, and just hitting that occasionally. And, and it's not the end of the world. You might miss something specifically, but, you know, you can gain so much more, too, by by giving yourself that freedom to maybe check out occasionally mm-hmm. and then check back in. So, you know, Voxer has been awesome. Uh, a couple of things I just want to point out, a couple of things that I've learned from Voxer or that I've gained from Voxer. Number one, I've made a lot of connections. Um, the fact that I'm talking to you people who... I don't know that I've met many of you. I mean, I, I mean, maybe around on around the Twitterverse or maybe in a Voxer chat here and there, um, but I don't know you people very well. 
but I'm I'm loving it. This is super. What a great what a great opportunity to get to know more amazing educators that are that are committed. I mean, you East you East Coast people, hats off to you. 1 a.m. starting this thing. My gosh, you guys are amazing. Um, I actually got to help a brand new edtech startup do a bunch of market research because of Voxer, a, a teacher named Valerie Lewis out of out of Georgia, uh, I think Atlanta area. She actually. Um, got me connected with this with this company, and I actually did some interviews with parents about with the parent and their child about ed tech stuff and what what things they would would like to see to help them, and that was really a cool thing experience for me as a teacher. I mean, these are these were people that I knew already, but it, I've never talked to them with that kind of depth of questioning. And man, I learned I learned so much already just in those couple of interviews. I started the school year, and I've like changed a number of things. Because of that one little minor piece, mm. Um, mm -hmm. I was connected with the, with a company called Kite Learning, K Y T E, and they basically are kind of like a Lynda.com but for educators. So if you've not heard of Kite Learning, go check them out. They're amazing, but they're basically like video tutorials on how to do stuff that might that will pertain to the education world and make you a better teacher. And um, I was able to. F through another Voxer group, meet up with uh, one of the CEOs, you know, one, one of the co-founders, and I will be creating content for them hopefully before too much longer, you know, and these little things that I never would have thought about, um, just amazingly awesome experience. But you know, the discussions and the conversations and the connections that I'm literally connected to people all over the world, even more so than with Twitter, and I feel like I have a closer relationship to these people than I do with Twitter, because when you hear their voice. It does something more for you than just reading their tweets, and I love Twitter. Don't get me wrong; I, it's my favorite. But I feel like Voxer takes it to that next level, which is yeah. amazingly beautiful. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I think what you're saying too about making these connections. Um, I've noticed that because everybody is very positive, very supportive. Mm -hmm. Um, but they hold each other accountable to at times having respectful debate about issues and that really pushes you to think deeper about subjects to think about it from a different angle um, and it could either change your thinking or help you stay more solid in what you believe mm -hmm. and I really really appreciated that it's kind of to me demystified the roles within the career of education from super you know from the top superintendents to the just and there is no top and bottom you know what I mean it's just like all the different roles you become just a human being who loves education wants to do the best job for these kids and you get to share that through this medium and it's it's just been phenomenal yeah well and I think sometimes we have these edu all-star people that we think about that like oh they're like we put them up on these pedestals you know you know even to mention names would kind of be problem, problematic, like, like the Aaron Kleins and the Nick Provenzanos, you know, and, and these kind of people that we think, oh, these these are like the, the, the amazing people on Twitter and online, and yet, you know, when you, you have these conversations with these people, Rafrans Davis, she's been like an edu, edu hero of mine for, for ages, and suddenly she's in a Voxer group, and I'm actually talking and chatting with her, and I'm like, yeah, we're, we're all just people. Like like you said, there there's no like hierarchy. It's just a matter of how much you were putting into it, and it's amazing how 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 very approachable these people really are, if you if you try. Mm -hmm. And that that was really cool to, to see. I mean, I've been telling people that for for a while, but to see that firsthand in this boxer stuff is it's just it's really really cool. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, really quickly, thinking of connections, Heather, if you can just say really fast, because you, you are so modest, you didn't say anything about what's going on in your life right now, and oh. some of that is due to the connections you've made, right? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's... About yeah, 1 o'clock in the morning, one thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, just being connected, I, it was through Twitter, I got this random tweet last year that said I should apply for a Michigan Educator Voice Fellowship. And I really didn't know what that was. Um, and so I just said, oh, okay, I'll apply. Well, I became one of the 50 educators um, in Michigan to be a, a voice fellow. And they're under America Achieves, which is a nonprofit out of New York. And it was just sort of, so I did that for a year, but using Twitter, using Voxer to stay connected. Um, now I am actually one of the three lead fellows in Michigan. Uh, and it was just, and I'm, 
doing a project on technology and I have created lots and lots of Voxer groups to get people connected um, and then also I am one of the PBS digital innovators and I along with somebody or Amanda on on the panel <laughs> um, and so yeah it's just it was amazing I used I start you know kept to be connected I got three donors choose projects that I put out there um, funded just because I was able to reach people all the way um, in I think I think Wisconsin or Wyoming or something who I don't know but if you were connected by using all of this um, it, it just made it's it's been a whirlwind of what happened and you know I think I heard it's what you sort of put in that you get out but definitely this boxer has just been an incredible incredible way and I got to meet Sarah um, actually this summer down in Washington because I knew her through Voxer mm -hmm. and I knew I was going down to be trained in Washington and so I Voxed her and I said hey let's meet up face to face and so we had lunch so it, it's it's just amazing and like you said Derek you know sometimes you look at these people Erin Klein was also a fellow um, so I got to meet her on Voxer and then also being a fellow but it is true like I look at her um, it's a lot of these educators like they're rock stars and then you talk with them um, and the, and we're all in it together you mm -hmm. know we're we're doing we're doing this work for the students and um, we're all passionate mm -hmm. great well um, Heather why don't you introduce Amanda since you know her better than I do <laughs> okay well I can say <laughs> that we have been uh, on a Voxer group uh, through the PBS. Well, it was March, right, Amanda? That, that sounds about right. Somewhere around okay. there, yeah. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Are you a lead, a lead PBS? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say. I hear I missed a great karaoke session on the Not at ISTE hat oh. or group that I wasn't following because I, you know, I'm right. <laughs> Yes, well, um, Amanda, I so we've been through or we've been part of a Voxer group that I started immediately after I became a PBS a digital innovator. I said, okay, there's a hundred of us around the nation and what better way to connect is through Voxer. And so, um, and since we're all digital <laughs> innovators, it was pretty easy to get um, everybody on board and they all jumped on. Um, but Amanda is one of the lead 30. Is there 30 of you? Yes, yeah, 30. Okay, yeah. okay. who got to actually go down to ISTE. Um, and so I'll just turn it on over to you. Yeah, so um, I'm Amanda Hawes. I teach, um, well, K-8 this year. I'm in a new position. And I'm a coach for the elementary schools in our district. So um, I've been more active in the last couple of months, social media-wise, because now I'm looking for my support groups in my new position. And Heather, interestingly, you were the person that introduced me to Voxer because I had never heard of it before. Um, it came up at one of our cohort webinars. Um, so I'm really new to Voxer. But it's been a really positive experience so far. Um, mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed, I mean, first and foremost, just being able to connect with the group. Um, I'm only in a couple of groups right now. I'm in the PBS group, and we have one um, with more local educators here, so I recently just met people across town that I had never met before on Voxer, which was great. Um, yeah. and it's so funny, you can be so close and never meet these other educators down the street, and now you know I've met them digitally, and so that was really fun. But it's been great to chat with people. Well, I do have been saying that you get a little bit more personality when you can hear people talking, and you can leave messages for the group and check them on your own time. I feel a little guilty because I always think about things at night. I'm a night person, so I always think, oh my gosh, I hope the East Coasters turn their notifications off so I'm not blasting them at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so that's my tech tip, that you can turn those little dings off. You don't have to let them ring all the time, right? Um, but yeah, it's been a really great tool, and I've kind of, the more, and listening to people talk, I'm just kind of, I'm having these little light bulbs go off sitting here um, thinking about 
you know, what we might be able to use Voxer for just in my district this year. And Jennifer made a comment that just came up today as I was talking to one of our new teachers. And we were discussing, you know, how can we connect her with more people across the district because she just kind of wanted to, you know, reach out to the other grade level members um, at the other sites. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we have a little Voxer group maybe and get all the support providers and the, the new teachers and then whoever else in there and and maybe just get a little support group going and connect people across the district because it, you know, we all teach, we all know it can be very isolating sometimes. And so what, just another great tool to get people talking and um, collaborating and it's quick and easy. You don't have to set a meeting time and you don't have to set, you know, a chat time. You can just leave a message for someone. And I've had the same experience everybody else so far, it seems, with that. And that's just that you leave that message and it's, like feedback so quickly from somebody, which is really nice. Um, that that um, the speed when you need it, it's been great. It's sort of that like, you know, just kind of at the right moment, at the right time, getting what you need, and, and yeah. that's really great. It's been really great. So mm -hmm. that has been my experience so far. I'm kind of now. I'm really excited about where we could take. Okay, I have to interject because, Amanda, I'm pretty sure I was at ISTE with you at a coffee EDU that Alice Keeler hosted. Oh! <laughs> and you were just, so the world, the educational world is teeny tiny. And so anyway, funny. so I just had to say, as you were talking, I thought, oh my gosh, this is how I know you. That's oh funny. my goodness, how funny. So we, I wasn't in that Voxer, I'm not at ISTE Voxer group either, I'm afraid. But Yeah, I don't. hear from, uh, I hear we missed a good karaoke, so next year. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I mean, that is one of the things about Voxer that is still amazing to me, how it does connect people up across the continents, not just, you know, your neighborhoods. And um, I'm glad you mentioned turning the notifications off because when I first started using Voxer, my husband was like, why does your phone keep going off at one in the morning? And I quickly learned how to turn my notifications off. So remember, anybody that's new to Voxer who's watching this recording or, or listening, definitely get into the nitty gritty of the settings. And then um, I've also noticed, you know, we've mentioned that their feedback can be really fast. Well, on the flip side of that, if you have a message to leave for somebody, it's also okay to not get back to them for a couple of days. You know, I mean, whether it's a personal box or something else, like, like that is okay. I've done and left boxes for people and, um, you know, you hear from them two days later and it's like, oh yeah, that's right, I was having this conversation and there's the answer. It's, it's been wonderful. And for planning, it's wonderful for planning purposes as well. Um, really quickly, I just want to say that Sarah, was the person that did it left a video for us, but Linda let us know that I guess we cannot see her on the video. So, and we are running kind of low on time, so we probably won't, won't show that. But Sarah has been an integral part of my experience as well on social media, and she's just so approachable and available. And um, I got into it back, you know, when when Boxer was kind of a new thing as well. So, just wanted to mention her, give a shout out to her. Wish that we could play the video, but uh, we won't be able to tonight. So, um, Rochelle, or well, let's see, before we move on, is there anything else that you would, might want to say or think of, Amanda, for where you're at and how you're using Voxer? That's, I just had another thought and I'm like chat, typing over here in the sidebar as I, I know we're mostly talking about, you know, our PLNs and things, but I'm, I'm curious as to whether people have been using with students at all. So if anyone has any information about that in the future, it'd be awesome to hear from you about what you're doing and how it's going. Um, last year, there's a it was I wasn't like turning Voxer over to my students, but I knew a teacher in Alaska, and so we were actually shooting challenge math questions back and forth to each other. And she actually left like directions on how to do a math problem, so I played or whatever it was, you know, something with the teacher voice going. I played it for my students. They did the problem. We took some pictures, sent it back to her class, and vice versa. And I did that with her. And then I know a couple of times Heather, it just so happened because Heather's my sister, we had Voxed and it was the end of the day and like all my kids um, didn't, it's called an Oli, it's a, a, a Hawaiian chant, so they did that for her and I think, didn't Heather, you play it for your kids in your class? The kids yes, that was, it was, uh, I was going to remember that it was a great 
great experience just to hear and to have my students sitting there and I was able to say these are students in Hawaii who are singing to you right now. <laughs> yeah, so I think the, the options are endless. It's just um, according to your imagination and your creativity how you can possibly use this. Hey, I have one more thought too. Um, yes. A good buddy of mine, he is a, is a principal up in northern Utah, and he actually has asked all of his teachers to get a Voxer account because it's a free app. There's no cost because they can all sit on Wi-Fi when in the building, but he uses it so they can avoid having to do, like, using the intercom system is one oh. way he uses it. Because in that way, you're not interrupting class. But what he's also found that's fun is he'll Vox classes, like, once a week, and he'll ask the class a question about what they're studying. Hey, you know, I'm out here looking at, at the moon. It looks really interesting. What can you third graders tell me about the moon? And then suddenly now the principal is getting involved in literally in the education with the students, and they have to then respond back on Boxer to him. And he said, he said it's a really cool experience. He's got a group for, you know, different grade levels, but then also he has one with every, a chat going with every single teacher individually. And he said it's been really, really fun because it gets the kids excited about it. And, you know, he can ask the question, the teacher will see it, and they can play it whenever they have a minute, you know, obviously not going to interrupt unless it's, you know, some kind of an intercom kind of a piece as well. So, But he just, I, I thought that was really interesting, just really good on his part to say, okay, we want to try this as a school, and he said it's actually been pretty good. There's a few teachers that won't do it, but for the most part, he's got most of them doing it, and he said it's been really successful. So that's another thought for you as well if you're in administration or if you really love this and you can get your administrator to try it out. I think that could be a really fun way to do something here. I'm going to jump in because Derek, my husband's a vice principal and today we were having that conversation and he thought it would be a great way to eliminate some of the administrivia parts of a staff meeting too, right? Mm -hmm. To get those out of the way and then when you have a staff meeting you can actually engage in some professional learning. So that could be another use. Um, I have actually a recorded message. It's actually a Vox Voxer um, message left by Doug Trim. He's a principal in Delaware, and you'll probably recognize his voice, some of you, if you're in the Sat Chat or Edgevox match, uh, uh, chats. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear it okay, those of you who are out there, because we don't want to waste our time if it won't play clearly. But he is talking about exactly what you two were just talking about. So he's he's going to tell us how he uses Voxer at his school. Hey Karen, we use um, Voxer at Carry Down. It's an elementary school, K to five, and I have about 26 staff members that are there daily. Um, I'm actually going to use it this year, so myself and two coaches. And what we're going to do is uh, we we do observations, feedback, and it's one observation a week for 15 minutes, and then you have a feedback session that goes about 10, 15 minutes. So what we're going to plan on doing this year is, um, and these are scheduled observations, but when we leave the classroom, we're going to give the teacher some questions to think about so that they are prepared um, when they come to our meeting, having already thought about those questions. So the question might be something along the lines of, um, were there opportunities for turn and talk during the 15 minutes that I was in there? Or, um, you know, were did you have to actually... Uh, give those directions, or could those directions have been written down or delivered in a screencast or something along those lines? So whatever, whatever, whatever it might be to kind of guide the conversation, so that when they come in, then we can be more efficient in the use of our time when we're meeting, and it gives people time to process ahead of time and come with ideas. Um, so Voxer, that's how we're going to use Voxer, and it gives a better tone. You know, just send an email. You know, questions through email or uh, a written note could be accusatory. So I think, you know, with the tone of Voxer, you, um, and we've been practicing, my coaches and I, um, the tone really sets it up that it's really a coaching model and not something that's accusing you of something you didn't do. It's just kind of pushing your thinking. So, but that's that's a whole lot of mindset work that I've done as well that has nothing to do with Voxer. Anyway, uh, we also have a Voxer group that is some, uh, about eight teachers in my building that are a Voxer. That's sort of our leadership team. So, um, I haven't used it too much, but I think the idea was to kind of throw out some ideas and see if it's a good fit for what we're doing. Um, so that's another way we're doing it. And then I do a lot of back channel stuff with staff. Mm -hmm. So if they have a question about something, they really box me. Uh, you know, is, can we do, you know, BYND at lunch or something? I don't know, just whatever it might be. So um, that's kind of how I use it with mm -hmm. my staff currently. We've 
So thank you, Doug. Oh, he, I think he went on to say that they also used it for a, a planning session for uh, something that they were doing, a large group of people were doing. So yeah, there are just so many, many creative ways that you could use Boxer. Great. OK. Yeah. Um, anybody have any other comments before Rochelle and I kind of wind us down? Um, the one thing I just wanted to say about the notifications is if you do have an iPhone, you want to make sure that you go into the settings of the Voxer app along with the iPhone settings to get those notifications off. Uh, because I had a teacher who said, I turned it off in Voxer, but it's still like my husband and my son are going crazy because it's, my phone is nonstop. And so she realized she had to go into the iPhone settings to turn those notifications off. Yeah. And along with those iPhone settings, you know, here's just a general tip if you're an iPhone user. In the iPhone settings, you have a thing called Do Not Disturb. I'd highly recommend you set that um, just for, like, the sleeping hours. You're not going to miss anything. It'll still show up on your notification screen, but then you're not going to pester everybody with, like, the, the beeps and the dings and the whistles and all the little bobs and bigs of whatever's. At least during your sleeping time, you know, it's going to make your life so much nicer. And if you, so you're afraid somebody's not going to get you, if they call in or text more than more than twice in three minutes, it's going to go through. So just consider that. And that if you turn that thing on, that will also help with those sleeping times. Okay. Um, Rochelle, I think I hear the cokey frogs. <laughs> yeah, they're really they're loud. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> I know. I don't hear many out of my window tonight. Um Listen, when you show, when Rochelle's going to share some slides in a minute after she introduces herself, and there is a link on there, a, it's a bit.ly link which takes us to a Google form, and for anybody else who's watching the recording or watching live, there are some show notes that has a, um, has this, this, is it a Google form, I believe, uh, that has all the groups that we are aware of <laughs> that you could possibly or potentially become part of. Okay, that said, Rochelle. Take it away. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Rochelle DeLang, um, originally from Michigan. Uh, funny story about how I connected with Heather and Karen in a minute. But um, I teach elementary technology currently at Kamehameha Schools, Hawaii, on the Big Island. Um, and I teach technology K-5. So I we, we're one-to-one -one with iPads. We do computer cart stuff. I do a lot of coding, robotics type things. So um, that's a little bit about me. Um, I use Voxer um, professionally and like personally. I, it's nice because my family's back in Michigan. Um, by the time I get home from work and want to talk with them, um, they're already going to bed. Um, and by the time they're boxing me, I, I just get messages in the morning from them because they're already at lunch when I wake up in the morning. So it's nice with the time difference. Um, but the story behind me meeting um, Heather actually is, Karen and I were both part of the Mish Ed Voxer group, and um, I, Heather had noticed that we were both from Hawaii, and we were both on the Big Island, and then we started some back and forth, and then that's how that connection happened. Um, then I was back in Michigan to present at a conference there, and I actually got to meet um, Heather face-to-face, -face. and then um, <laughs> Karen and I actually presented at a conference together here on the Big Island, so um, that those crazy connections all came through Boxer, which is awesome. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now. Is that good, Karen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if you can see it. Mm. Oh, and Heather or whoever typed that message to me about sharing Sarah's video, she said that she would be happy to share that with anyone. So. If we can make that happen, it's, we'll do that. Oh, and um, the other nice thing about Boxer, too, is I don't have very good um, signal on my phone at work, uh, but you can access all your messages and stuff um, on the Internet, like through a computer. So I that's what I have open right now. Isn't that, only, <laughs> is that only available if you're a pro user, if you're a paid user, though? Um, I am not a paid user, oh, no. Oh, okay, that's new, then. Yeah. I thought it was only paid. Yeah. Um... And so Karen and I wanted to start something. Um, there's already a Twitter chat called Ed Chat Hawaii. Does um, anybody, want? Michelle, excuse me, does anybody, everybody see her slides or not? 
Mm. Oh, okay, so we've got some uh, one yes, one no, because I have a no for me. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I don't need to see it. I know what they look like. <laughs> it's also in the show notes too. Um, I, should I? Can you see them now? Derek can see them. That's good. Oh, and Amanda can see them. Heather and Jennifer, you cannot. And yeah, so I don't know if you know who. If not sure okay. if on the recorded session if we'll be able to see them or not. So we'll just we'll figure that out later. All right. Well, I'll just go through them anyways, and they're in the show notes too, so we can get to them later if they want to. Um, so Karen and I wanted to start um, an extension off of the Ed Chat Hawaii Twitter group and Creative Action group. Um, and so, I mean, you guys already know how to make an account, but if you don't, um, for those of you who are tuning in later to this recorded version, um, it's super easy to make an account. You just download the app on whatever device you choose to use. Um, my mom has a Windows phone, and it even works on that. So um, once you sign up and create your account, um, just let us know your username and add Karen as a contact, because Karen is a pro user. I am not. And you'll see her um, username there. And once we get, hear from you, we'll add you to the chat. And then um, once you're added to the chat, just go ahead and introduce yourself um, and let us know all about you. Um, so I kind of already talked about how Heather and Karen and I are all connected through Voxer, but. Um, these are just some pictures of some other connections that we made. I don't know, Karen, if you want to talk to any of these. Um, I'm assuming, is it the one with the book study? Um, the one, it's like you and oh, me. At the, okay, so I'll explain it. <laughs> oh, um, is it, is it so the slides with the pictures? Yeah. Okay, I remember that. So I was just going to simply say that, you know, Heather and I are sisters, and we had kind of explored technology together. And then... Um, and then she had told me one day, one afternoon, she said, hey, I think there's somebody from your area in the Michelle chat. And so sure enough, you know, through Voxer, we discovered that Michelle was teaching right down the road from where I was teaching, yet we met through our Michigan connection, which was just crazy. And so then we got to, um, we, we, we finally voxed each other. We discovered that we were both going to be presenting at the um, Kamehameha uh, or what's the conference called, actually? Technology. Um, I think it's Hawaii, Hawaii Island Technology Conference. Or yeah. 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 So, so that was a great second connection. So I went over there and said hi to her, and we got to meet. So we took a picture, <laughs> and then we presented. And, and then we also um, sort of got um, made more connections because of meeting people that were going to be presenting at that conference. And it, it's just it's really amazing to to talk to people that are across the country, but then to actually get to meet them face to face. So um, that's that's it in a nutshell. And this will happen over and over and over. And I think it's a, a little more amazing than when it happens when you're on an island <laughs> and you meet people that are on the mainland. So that, that was extra special. Yeah. And, uh, the next slide, Rochelle, the one with the book study, before we totally run yep. out of time, I just wanted to say that the book study connections have been, or option, has been very, very good for me. I've really enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. um, I really got into two of them, and I put pictures on the slide. One was for Drive by Daniel Pink, and the other was uh, Digital Leadership with Eric Schinninger. And it was really special to have Eric jumping in and leaving messages in that boxer chat. Um, the, the book study was phenomenal just had so many great ideas, but then I discovered through knowing he was there, um, or that he would get on and leave comments, that he was going to be coming to Hawaii, so I got to go to a professional development training through my school, um, and got to actually meet him in person, and that's what that one picture is of me with him at that I heard he's coming back, too. Yes, yes, I, yep, he is. So, that's just a really neat thing that happens, and it, you, you know, you, you just have to smile because, you know, technology is bringing people together in more than one way. Yeah, and then so opposite for me, I was in the drive book study on Voxer, and then um, I was presenting a conference in Honolulu, and I kind of found out that Daniel Pink was presenting somewhere on the island that night, and I was like, I have to go, and I totally nerded out, and <laughs> listened to him speak, and met him, and took a picture with him, and told him about the um, Voxer group, and it was good fun. So. Yeah, 
Yeah, great. Well, um, Linda, we are at 8.03, so I'm not sure um, how you want to look down our evening, or Rochelle, if you want to say anything more. Maybe um, a little, here, let me a little something here. about our, our box or Hawaii chat group, possibly. Um, so, what Karen and I kind of envision for our, our Boxer Hawaii group um, is just a place to, at exactly what we've been talking about, bounce ideas off of each other, chat about um, things that are going on in our classroom, ideas that we may have, um, collaborate with each other, um, box each other's classes, or set up things like Google Hangouts and Skypes or what have you. But um, And the nice thing about Voxer, I know that we're talking like on a global level, but just like with our state, um, it's really hard when you don't get to see all the people that you work with because you're on three different islands. So like with Kamehameha Schools, there's three campuses. <laughs> we're at Kapalama, Maui, and here. Um, so just being able to connect cross island would be really useful to do. So I think that Boxer can be a really great tool that we can use to um, enhance our professional learning in Hawaii. Couldn't have said it better. I agree. Neat. Wow, this has been a full hour. I, I'm stunned by, um, first of all, the geographical uh, diversity. First ever for Google Rocks. We have someone from Utah, from Ontario, Canada, who's still awake, I think, and <laughs> California, Michigan, then the Big Island, and me on Maui. Um, it's definitely a record, and I, I applaud you, Karen, for um, getting everyone together for this wonderful, um, I think this is, serves as a model for what we might be able to do more on Google Rocks, is have people who are passionate about a particular topic and can come up um, and talk about it. And I'd be happy to do that with any on any topic that anyone wants to have. I'll be glad to do take a back um, stand in the back uh, to do that. Love the Koki frogs, uh, the Koki frog bombing. That was the first for us for sure. Um, the, Sorry, the, the, no problem. I I had to mute you for a little while if you noticed, Rochelle. But oh, I know, I talk. know. Um, I didn't realize that Vox. Could be a, you could have a box as a noun. You could box people. Uh, you could get boxes. Uh, I didn't realize it was such a, a, a diverse word. Um, administrivia. I never heard that word before. I think I'm going to use it. We definitely need less of that. Um, and uh, kite learning really stood out for me. I want to try that for sure, Derek. So um, let me just really quickly go through the questions. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, show, Shane Asselstein, who's actually a regular on our, I, I asked our regulars to um, not come on. I, I don't know if I asked Shane not to come on, but because I wanted to, to be totally your show. Um, so he's one of those. And he says, um, uh, not at ISTE was mentioned, and he said, even those of us not at ISTE, I'm at ISTE, used Voxer to stay connected. So. Um, uh, right. Susie Hiley, are you familiar mm -hmm. with her? She asked several questions. She asked, uh, how many different boxer groups do you, each of you belong to? Is there a record? Oh. Who, who belongs to the most on this <laughs> panel? I, I think I'm between 5 and 10, um, but that's just and, um, educational chats. Yeah. yeah, I think there's like five, yeah. and ten, 5 to 10, but even that is a little overwhelming, so... I, I think our I think Sarah um, definitely wins the prize there because in her video she mentions that I think she's got her finger in like fifty chats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm in nine. I have I have nine group chats, but then I have a number of individual chats with just one person going as well. So probably like I said, about ten group chats are probably close to fifteen individual mm -hmm. chats. They're not all super active right now. They're not at ISTE, obviously yeah. right now. It's pretty much dead, but I've got ten going currently. And I like, um, Derek, what you said earlier about even like, because I am in about nine, but two of them, the Sat Chat and the Edumatch, which are really huge ones, um, because of the lead fellowship and because of the fellowship that I'm part of for this year, 
those two Voxer chats sort of have gone to the like the back burner, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I just keep on hitting, you know, heard or read, you know, her, or all messages heard or whatever, um, because I don't want to necessarily leave those because those are incredible. But for right now, I'm focused on some other groups, so that's okay. <laughs> Well, and I think it's good to point that out too, Heather. I mean, you mentioned that you don't want to leave it. The thing with Voxer, and I've actually contacted them and said, you should change this. If you're in a group and you leave it, you can't go back in. Mm. And I really wish they would change that and say, you know what, you can leave and you can come back in later. Because there are times when you know you're not going to be able to do a whole lot. And so I feel like you kind of have to do that mark is read. And so what I'll do occasionally in those ones that I do that, I'll just say, hey, guys, if you haven't heard from me in a while and you're looking for me specifically, you know, just shoot me a side fox, and I will be happy to respond. I think Karen, I think that's what I think that's what we did, Karen. Yes, that works really good. Because I, I dropped off the radar. I drop off the radio radar every now and then just because everything going on. I just can't. You can't keep up. You just can't do it for your own sanity, well, and it can't be yeah. a bad thing to do that. And then for those like on the other end of the spectrum, with the learning curve with Twitter. For those who may be feel intimidated or are like a little nervous about joining Voxer, like I would suggest just joining and just being an active listener. You don't even have to necessarily like say anything until you're comfortable to, but you can be in on the chat and just listen and get ideas that way. So for sure, and I'll jump in because I'm a three week newbie after all, and I'm just in one, and that may change in a few months, but just one is perfect for learning how it all works and, and making some real connections. So I would really advocate for that. Yeah. yeah. One more thing, did we mention that you can actually just you can type your messages in there instead of just talking as well? Like, for yeah, example, I was, I was on a shuttle on Saturday night, um, yeah, I and remember. I didn't want to be talking with everybody, so I just typed everything in. In fact, somebody was like, do you not ever talk? Am I messing it up? And I had to explain why. I didn't really talk, but I can type it all in there, you know. And So don't be afraid to do that occasionally as well. But I think the power of Fox really is the voice. Yes. But don't be afraid to, put your, to type a message in if you need to for a day or whatever. Do mm -hmm. what you got to do. Just yeah. kind of make it, make it, make those connections. You can also send a, a picture very quickly, and they just added a new feature for a video. And yeah, then uh, one other tip is if you want to save a message, you can star it, and it puts it in a side kind of box, and you can like basically it's a favorite spot. The yeah. like, one thing with the starred messages is like I don't have the paid account, so you can only save so many starred messages, and then. When they get to be however old they are, then you cannot access them unless you buy the pro account. Okay. Uh, I was going to just mention, too, I don't know if this came up, and I don't know what the audience is going to be on this, but the thing that confused me in the beginning is people said, oh, you know, you should join this Voxer group. And I was like, great. And I signed up for Voxer, and then I was like, hey, where's the group, and how do you get in, and what's going on? I didn't realize, and no one really mentioned um, until we were, we, you know, Heather had mentioned in the webinar, like, so in order to get into the groups, and we have that great spreadsheet, you have to actually ask someone to put you in those chat groups, unless you're creating your own, right? So that was something that, you know, was kind of yeah. nice to figure out. <laughs> yeah. So for Ed Chat Hawaii, we want them to be able to... We I do have a Google form that I was going to have them fill out, too, um, if they want to access it that way, or via Twitter, or... Um, but as long as they box Karen and let her know, their exact username, she can add them. So. Yeah, and it is important to give me the exact username, so that's uh, that'll that'll make it happen much faster. And remember that form that's in the show notes, so that will give you an idea of different groups that you could potentially um, join. And the the person that could add you to the group is listed on that form. Hey, with it? your with your usernames, can I say one last thing? When I first joined, it assigned me a username that I didn't really like, and only pro people could change it. Well, then they changed it now, so even a free account, you can change your username to whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So they'll yeah. probably give you a username right off, but if you don't like that, jump in there and try to change it to what you want, and it just makes it so much easier, and then that way you, you can start telling people right from the beginning what your username is. So that's just a little quick tip that I discovered late and I was glad I did because I hated that I had it was part of my username that I wanted and a bunch of numbers. And so then I mm -hmm. found it made it work. So keep that in mind. Um, Linda, I would like to say just one last thing. You were mentioning um, you know, how wonderful it is that all these people were willing to come on and do this. Well, 
I, I take no credit there because this is a great example of the beauty of Boxer. I was able to get on and leave messages for people, see if anybody was interested in joining our group, and um, it was so simple and so easy to do. But the rest of it that's important to say is it's a testament to the quality and the caliber of people that I've been lucky enough to connect with. Um, lots of just very positive, energized, excited people who enjoy their work and want to share and learn together. So I'd just like to leave us with that thought from me. And I'm going to try to join EdChat Hawaii. Is that an active group? <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, it's, That'll be my first yeah. first uh, try. Brand new, like, <laughs> okay. You'll love it, Linda. Okay. Yay. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. You know, I uh, joined Twitter just to follow Joyce Valenza, who's my librarian hero. That was the only reason I got on. And uh, long story short, you know how that works. I'm like way over there <laughs> as well, <laughs> in different directions, in a good way, of course. So that's the only thing, yeah. is, you know. Uh, definitely need to know about the notifications and good tips. Um, th those of you who um, there was a back channel chat going on, so um, it'd be cool if you added some of those uh, thoughts to the show notes um, for okay. our audience. Yeah, um, and as soon as we get off, the the chat will disappear. So maybe you can just um, figure out what we need to keep. Uh, yeah valuable for people as well. So you got me excited. I'm sure other people will try it as well. And thank you so much, Karen, for setting it up. You, you can take credit for that, right? <laughs> and so lovely to meet all of you, even though you're like an inch square. Um, and <laughs> 1 o'clock is it's probably almost 2 for Heather. And Ontario, Canada is way over there. 2.15, to the east, but... <laughs> to the east. Oh, much appreciated that you came on. You must be a 24 hour, on a 24-hour schedule or something. Yeah. No, really but I get to sleep in tomorrow, so it's perfect. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, that's perfect. That's what we have to figure out, you know, how people... And Heather took a nap. Can I tell people that, Heather? <laughs> Heather took a nap yes, before she came on. Yeah, so we, we, make, um, we make, make it happen. So again, much appreciated. Um, you're welcome to stay on a few more minutes after we get off, if you'd like. Um, but we will say aloha to na for now to our audience. And uh, again, very much thanks. A lot of mahalos to the people who came on tonight. And we really, really appreciate it. And we'll do something like this again, maybe another topic. Or about Boxer being like the best thing ever. We could do a progress report or something. So we That'd be great. And for having us. Oh, yes, thank you. A pleasure, a pleasure. So we'll sign off for now. Bye. Good night, everyone. Aloha. Thank you.